Justin, thank you. And new at nine, it's one of the biggest unsolved mysteries for Hawaii. Who killed Diane Suzuki? Back then, there was no cell phone video and surveillance video wasn't common. But methods of gathering and storing evidence have come a long way since then. Tonight, we begin a series taking a look at some of Hawaii's high-profile cold cases. If you were in Hawaii during the 1980s, no doubt you remember the tremendous effort by police and volunteers to find 19-year-old Diane Suzuki. She was last seen on July 6, 1985, at the Rosalie Woodson Dance Academy in Aiea, where she was a teacher. Initially, the case was classified as a missing person. Prior to 1986, 1984, 85, that typical homicide investigation involved interviews, diagrams, and photographs. Um, we had very little scientific work. But six years after Suzuki disappeared, police went back to the scene with a new tool called luminol, a chemical that can cause blood and other substances to glow. Luminol did not exist when the Diane Suzuki case was first investigated. The luminol was sprayed in the upstairs dance studio bathroom. Testing showed what police believed to be blood, and the case was reclassified to murder. Police never found Suzuki's body, and the prime suspect was never charged. And how do you think modern technology could have helped in the Diane Suzuki case? Well, we did have some very good technology at the time. Um, we didn't have the um, full understanding of all the players within the justice system about the Diane Suzuki case. We had lots of evidence that we felt was evidence that could be used to convict, much less charge, a particular person in, in that individual case. Current prosecutor Keith Kaneshiro was also prosecutor back then. He declined an interview for this story, but told us this when we asked about Suzuki's case back in 2010, quote, you have to have evidence of proof beyond a reasonable doubt to convict at trial. You have to have evidence of probable cause to arrest someone, end quote. Personally, I believe we've collected as much evidence as we could possibly have done in the Diane Suzuki case. Diaz would like to see HPD revisit the case. In that 31 years, she's lost a parent who never did find out what happened to their child. I find that particularly heartbreaking. And how do you think revisiting it would help? I think revisiting it would open up the thought processes of the people who are responsible for collecting the evidence and for examining the evidence and making decisions on the evidence. Perhaps the technology with DNA can examine that same blood evidence and work through the decontamination processes that might have occurred over time. He also feels today's technology, including surveillance video, would have helped in the Lisa Ao murder case. She disappeared three years before Diane Suzuki and at the time was also 19. Her decomposed body was found days later, but no one was ever charged with the crime. Perhaps we would have been successful in identifying the location where her body was held after her murder. It would have led us directly to the suspect. HPD declined to do an on-camera interview for this story, but we've learned they have a unit dedicated to reviewing cold case files, which includes submitting old evidence for retesting and re-interviewing witnesses. I asked the department if it would consider retesting evidence from these specific cases. I got no response. Tomorrow night, we continue our cold case series speaking with the brother of a teenager murdered in the 1980s by what police believed was a serial killer. That's tomorrow on the KH12 News at 9.